very good morning all of you at the outset i am very happy to welcome you all to this today's session the topic of the today's session is the application of mathematics in computer science you have been teaching mathematics for a quite long time you are all uh, the great mathematicians i know your students they are learning various theorems various formulas various concepts of mathematics but i don't know how many of them know where these theorems are being applied where these formulas are applied what is the use of uh, learning these theorems learning this lemma because mathematics is used in every field we cannot avoid uh, mathematics it is part and parcel of our life and today we are going to discuss about how it is being used in computer science mathematics is a base for computer science without learning mathematics we cannot study computer science at all right from because it is uh, the computers are based on zeros and ones computer science is based on zeros and ones it is built up on the foundation of the mathematics right from the computer programming then it is being used in the data structures and where the logic design is being employed in design of computers the boolean logic the discrete mathematics the role of algebra in computer science the use of linear block codes the role of automata automata theory that is being used in uh, the construction of compilers the algorithmic approach for computations the computer simulation then uh, the area of computer graphics now it has got various branches of course how mathematics is playing a role in computer graphics the use of probability theory now the data science is widely popular the base for data science is probability theory and search engines google search yahoo search various search engines are there what is the role of mathematics in design of these search engines before we get into the talk we just uh, have a glance of our forefathers the great mathematicians who rendered greater work for computational mathematics here first come the father of geometry euclid the year 330 to 275 bc was employed in the library of alexandria he has made lot of uh, contributions he has achieved a lot and uh, his writings have been published in the form of books which has been used by mathematicians for number of centuries the popular gcd algorithm that is one of his commendable work the mathematical proofs and algorithms which are all the part and parcel of our uh, computer science the next person is the father of algebra algorithmic the word algorithm is coined after this gentleman who was working in the house of wisdom baghdad 830 to 846 ad he has made his contributions on various uh, fields in different fields in geography 
or the appearance of the earth. He has designed the astronomical tables. He has made his contributions on algebra and in uh, basic arithmetic. He has described the positional number systems, the digits. He has given algorithms for algorithmic operations and for solving linear and quadratic equations. A square plus BX plus C equal to zero. The next person is George Boole, who is called as the father of uh, Boolean algebra, who is a 19th century mathematician. He has developed the Boolean logic to our faults with the basic operators, under operator, or operator, not operator. Now it has been expanded. NAND, NOR, like this. These logic, the Boolean operators are used for the construction of the logic gates. The logic gates are the basic components of the design of the integrated circuits. So that is the base for the motherboard of the computer. He has made his contribution in Boolean. Another person is Alan Turing, who is the father of computing. So he has designed a machine, the very first machine. It was not called as a computer, it was called as a Turing machine. Way back in 1949. It is named as Mark I. So he has given the formal definition of an algorithm. So the foundation for the computer science. And this Mark I, which was used for the general purpose activities, it was called as a general purpose computer. In 1950, he has made a very good article on computing machinery and intelligence, which is the foundation of the artificial intelligence. Now, which has grown like anything. A is playing a vital role in various fields. Next come is uh, Kurt Gordon, who is one of the founders of the recursion theory. He is considered as the greatest uh, mathematical logician of the 20th uh, century. When you take up the computers, we have uh, digital computers and analog computers. Widely, we are using only digital computers. Basically, it is an electronic device is accepting data, process them according to the instructions given by the user. The computer will never make the mistake. People say the computer makes a mistake. It is a fault of the computer. The computer will never make the mistake. What is the instruction you give based on that the data will be processed and it will produce the output if required the data will be stored in the memory which is available within the system, within the computer, or it may be redirected to some other medium, or we may take the printout. Nowadays, we have uh, the popular cloud storage. We can store the data in the cloud also. So we have uh, the facts of uh, computer science. It is as much about computers as astronomy is about uh, telescopes given by Distra. You know, Distra very well was given the shortest path algorithm. Not just writing computer programs or learning how to use the popular tools in general, the study of the processing of information includes many areas, particularly mathematics. It involves various areas, electronic, physics, various areas are there. And the major part is mathematics. In another side, computers turn mathematics into an experimental subject. Now, we have the advantages of using computers. Everyone knows its speed. Now, the speed is tremendous. Reliability, it gives the reliable data, reliable output, producing the results, the consistent results. As I told you earlier, 
we have voluminous storage by using the cloud infrastructure and now it is widely used in communications so without communication we don't survive communication so these are all the advantages of uh, using computers in all these advantages mathematics is playing a vital role all these aspects are tightly related to the effective usage of mathematics mathematics for computer science today's computer systems are more complex and more rapidly evolving there is the need for tools and techniques that assist in understanding the behavior of the systems this will answer the questions such as cost and the economy and the performance of the systems there are two ways to analyze the characteristics of the computers one is experimental another one is modeling the three basic areas of mathematics related with computer programming for experimental and modeling in theory the mathematical modeling physics chemistry engineering principles are incorporated so if you take up a research we devise the mathematical model of our research work in computation the exterior provide input to what experiments to try provide feedback to the theoreticians third one is conduct the conduct of experiments verifying theory verifying computations once verified computations need not be verified again in similar cases so whenever we do research in computer science we substantiate with mathematical proof we justify our results with mathematical proof mathematical proof so when you take up the junction of mathematics and computer science the mathematics has got pure mathematics and theory of computing computer science has got a portion of theory of computing so when you intersect both mathematics and computer science a new concept that is evolved the theory of computing it is mathematics is largely involved in theory of computing why we have to combine computations and mathematics without mathematics there is no computation at all the numerical simulation fills a gap between the physical experiment and theoretical approaches many phenomena are too complex to be studied exhaustively by either theory or experiments besides complexity many are too expensive to study experimentally either from hard currency or the time point of view when you consider the astrophysics when experiment may be impossible so we are very much interested to carry out research in astrophysics but what is the feasibility study but we do that with the simulation the computational approaches allow many outstanding issues to be addressed that cannot be considered by the traditional approaches of theory and experimentation alone despite the fact that mathematics and computer science are strong intertwined and each helps each other the concept of computer science and mathematics emerges from the fact that mathematics and computer studies are linked to each other we cannot avoid mathematics and computer science computers nowadays computer science is also the part of mathematics because when you go through the syllabus of uc mathematics or bt mathematics most of the computer science subjects are being taught the programming are being taught c c++ java data structures python or programming data mining these are all the subjects included in the curriculum of uh, ug as well as pg in mathematics faculty mathematics uses computers as tools to help with algebraic analysis and even theorem proving while computer scientists make use of the wide range of mathematics from logic and algebra to statistics 
evaluating an arithmetic expression using stack. Everyone know the stack. It is one of the important aspect in uh, data structures. So we write the expressions. The expressions being evaluated by using the order of uh, evaluation of expressions. We know that. So two multiplied by three minus four by five. That is a normal inference expression. The operators are given between the operands, and we evaluate. But actually, it is being evaluated by the system with the help of the stack and with the help of post prefix expression. Two, three, star, four, five, slash, minus. So we have another uh, post prefix evaluation. This is an example for that. This is an algorithm for evaluating the expression by using the stack. Now we take a simple example of evaluating one plus two star three minus four. Then uh, the first uh, step is post uh, string one, two, three star plus four minus. So this is a stack, it's got three rooms. Initially, one will be inserted. We have one stack pointer that always indicates the top of the stack. The next uh, operand two that is also included that is top of the stack. So that is arrangement of the stack. Filing of books, we keep on taking one book, second book, third book, and we remove them from the top. Lost in first order. Top book will be removed, second book, third book. The one which was placed in the bottom, that will be removed at the last. That was the first book kept on my hand, and that was removed from my hand at the last. So two, then three is also there. Then we have the multiplication only with the last two numbers because three and two, they are multiplied with the operator six, that is stored above one and uh, the addition will be performed. It becomes seven. Seven will be stored. Then four will be entered into the stack. Then it will be subtracted. Seven minus four. We get the result of three. This is how the evaluation is being, the expression is being evaluated with the help of the mathematical uh, procedures, the order of evaluation. Then we have the Boolean algebra, the logic circuits, the study of principles of reasoning that is called as a logic. The David Boole, the first person, David Boole, already we have studied, we have learned, who is a 19th century mathematician, developed the mathematical system that is an algebra involving logic and Boolean algebra. He took the two important variables, uh, they are called as true or false. Then another person joined with him, who is called as the father of information theory, Claude Shannon. How to map the Boolean algebra to the digital circuits? We have the under operator, or operator, not operator. And the truth table is being drawn. So when you add zero and zero, and then we are getting only zero. Only when we have two ones, the under operation will produce the resultant as one. But or so when any one of the two inputs is one, then the output will be one. Then opposite negation, not if it is zero, it is it becomes one. When the input is zero, output is one. Input is one, output is zero. So these are all the logic gates, under gate, or gate, then not gate. So these logic gates are the base for designing the integrated circuits. And we have that additional systems. We have analog systems also. The widely used system is digital system. In our uh, academic institutions, we use only digital systems. Wherever, in most of the places, we use only digital systems. 
only for certain applications analog computers are being used they accept the data continuously but here we are using only discrete values zeros and ones simply said we are using two different types of watches one is analog watch another one is digital watch this watch digital watch it shows the time 1023 just we can read it is 1023 we need not make any calculations then after 1023 it will show 1024 1025 1026 that is discrete value but when you take up the analog we have the analog watch has got different hands our hand minute hand and second hand they are continuously running and approximately we make some calculation we make some calculation by seeing its positions now the time is 1025 exact time may be 1023 but we say the time is 1025 but have a look and we say we make some calculations in our mind so it is not that much accurate but it is also used in some places in some application analog computer but uh, digital computers are more popular the representations of digital design boolean algebra so we have uh, the values and gate or gate nand gate not gate then uh, we have the uh, truth table and these are all the various uh, basic identities of boolean algebra you may be teaching uh, all these uh, uh, identities of boolean algebra for mathematics students the commutative associative rule distributive rule de morgan theorems x uh, x plus y uh, whole dash equal to x dash into y dash so these identities uh, define the intrinsic properties of boolean algebra they are all uh, very much useful in simplifying the boolean expressions like that we have various uh, principles of boolean algebra then uh, next one is the introduction of uh, discrete mathematics so discrete mathematics we are using the digital computers without studying discrete mathematics the digital computers cannot be studied so we are using the number theory we are using the graph we are using the uh, the here we are using the key that is being used in the number theory these are all number theories of discrete values right how these the discrete values are being used in these number theories then uh, it is a uh, mathematics of uh, computers this graph theory is widely used in the networks counting technique coloring theory game theory and many more nowadays uh, in the pandemic situation most of the people are working only with online games by using the mobile we are using only online games a lot of games are available online games on an apps are available just uh, install the app install the game and you can play in online throughout the globe people may be working people may be are playing the game game theory the base is mathematics it is finite rather than infinite discrete mathematics it handles discrete distinct chunks of information that means you may talk about the schedule of flights leaving kochi but not the acceleration of one of those planes we cannot determine we cannot say the speed of the plane just we can determine the schedule when the flight can land when the flight can take off only this much can be done that is a discrete mathematics next one is logic and proofs how do computers and humans think the proposition propositional logic first order logic the proof of induction contradiction right these are all the various uh, applications of mathematics used in artificial intelligence in database design in logic circuits algorithms etc when you take up the number theory so we have uh, the euclidean theorem prime numbers in modular arithmetic the popular chinese reminder theorem 
If you take up the network security, cryptography is playing a vital role. This number theory is widely used in cryptography, especially in the design of keys, public keys, private keys, coding theory, data structures. How this number theory is used in computer security? It is playing by many roles, especially in the field of computer security, network security nowadays, mobile security, setting up the encryption keys and transferring the messages. After encrypting the message, the message can be transmitted. The confidential information, confidential messages can be transmitted from one place to another place, source to destination, without any uh, tampering of this information so that this uh, encryption is widely used. The practical side of number theory, the concepts are modular arithmetic. The prime numbers are playing a vital role in designing the keys which are used for encryption. Prime is reminder theorem, that is also another part. So when you talk about the cryptography, when you talk about the computer security or network security or any kind of uh, computer related security, we cannot ignore the ROC algorithm. It's a very popular uh, security algorithm, it's a benchmark algorithm that requires the practical side of number theory concepts like uh, prime number theorem, modular inverse, Euler theorem, then uh, integer factorization, modular inverse, congruence relations like that. So when you take up the RSA uh, cryptography, the prime number theory is used, modular arithmetic is used, post-modular exponentiation, we are using the congruence relations, Euler's theorem. In one algorithm, all these mathematical concepts are being used. And in counting, set theory is used, the functions are used, combinations, permutations, binomial theorems, counting by mapping, Recursions, when you take up the uh, factorial, when you take up the factorial of a particular number, recursion theory is being used. So it is used in probability, algorithms, data structures, etc. Counting these numbers used in the algorithms, how many steps are uh, needed to sort n numbers? Various sorting methods are there. Is a few sorting methods are given. Bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, pick sort, bucket sort, merge sort. So which algorithm is faster? For that, this number theory is being used. So we have graph theory, another important aspect. Nowadays, the standard on computers are used only at homes. And those computers are also connected to internet. Connected to internet. We are, our computer is linked with internet. So no computer can be called as a standalone system. So this graph theory is a base for computer networks. We are using vertices, edges. We are using nodes. We are using the connectivity. So these graphs, relations, this degree sequence, Eulerian graphs, isomorphism, trees matching, coloring, defining various nodes by using different coloring. And we have different topologies. Tree topology is one of the popular topologies. Like that, various topologies, they are also defined. It is mainly used in computer networks, circuit design, data structures. Graphs in computer science, the term graph is used in different sense in mathematics. To mean a chart displaying numerical data such as the bar graph, but the graphs that computer scientists are not related to these. Mainly, they concentrate on networks. We are using the nodes. Mathematically, they are called as vertices. Now, we call it as a nodes nothing but the computers. The autonomous computer is called as a node. Various autonomous computers are linked together to form a network. 
it is nothing but a graph these lines between that is called as an edge mathematically the lines the connectivity between the vertices the lines between the nodes indicate some sort of relationship between the object the vertex a can send the data to vertex b node a can send the data to node b like that now the usage of graphs and trees and communication networks an important application of graphs in computer science that is modeling the communication network generally vertices will represent computers processes and bits and edges will represent wires fiber or other transmission lines we have fiber optic cables we have coaxial cables other transmission lines through which data flows this is only for connected networks nowadays we are using the wifi network mostly for most uh, for some communication networks like the internet the corresponding graph is enormous and largely covered so we are going for the connection like uh, connection less computers connection like uh, connection less communication system next one is the uh, distros algorithm distros algorithm that is one of the premier algorithm to find out the shortest path between the source and the destination in the computer network we have 100 computers the data is from one computer to another computer it has to be transmitted it has to find out the path when the path is defined it should be clear the route should be clear the route should be reliable moreover the route should be the shortest route then easily it can travel and the data can be sent or the data can be received by the destination node the data will travel in the shortest path that shortest path algorithm is defined by this nowadays we are using the mobile communication wherever we go our mobile system is connected to the nearest tower that is a shortest path this the algorithm is being used when we go to chennai this is the shortest tower what is the nearest tower the shortest path algorithm is used when you go to delhi the nearest tower when you go to bombay the nearest tower so this the algorithm is applied in computer network and nowadays it is widely used in the mobile communication networks then in the graph theory how to send the data efficiently so that is by using the shortest path algorithm distros algorithm i told you just now how algebra is uh, used in programming databases and data mining that is another important area nowadays that is flourishing that is the set theory functions the relations nowadays we have the relation algebra also that is used in uh, the databases algebra is a basis for mathematics which is a tool for reason in uh, computer science it is the useful tool for formalizing and reasoning about the computation and the objects of uh, computation it is indivisible from logic where computer science has its roots it has been and is likely to continue to be a source of fundamental ideas of computer science from theory to practice another important area is linear block codes that is used in error correction and error detection fields while we transmit the data from one place to another place there is a possibility of uh, losing the data at the receiving end or the data may be corrupted even though the data is uh, uh, sent by using uh, the encrypted uh, method but still there are some intruders they may add something or they may delete something they may corrupt the data they may spoil the data like that for that this uh, linear block codes are being used 
This linear block codes allow for more efficient encoding and decoding algorithm. Linear block codes are an uh, important aspect of coding theory. The elements in the binary linear block codes are called the code words. The first error correction code was invented by Richard Hamming, who was working in uh, Bell Telephone Laboratories in uh, late 40s. Now it is called as the AT&T Bell Laboratories, that is in California. Hamming discovered a solution that would allow a computer to overcome an input error and restore the original input without having the program to restart. The codes he invented known as Hamming codes, even now it is being used, were the first non-trivial uh, linear block codes. And the next one is mathematical models of computation. The first one is automata and languages. We have finite automata, rectangular languages, custom automata, context-free grammars, context-free language, pumping lemmas, the students may not know where these automata theory is being used. It was used by Alan Turing while he designed the Turing machine, the Mark I computer. And uh, this automata theory is the base for the design of compilers. These languages are Newly coming, various languages are coming, high level languages are coming, C language, C, Java, various languages are coming. These are all English like languages. We can enter the language, but how the computers will understand these languages? So that should be interpretive, we're called as a com compilers. These compilers will accept our program as an input and convert them into machine acceptable code, that is an object code. These compilers are designed, these compilers are constructed by using the automata theory, the computability theory, including machines, already I've told you, decidability, reducibility, the algorithmic arithmetic hierarchy. When you want to evaluate an expression, the arithmetic hierarchy is required, evaluation of expression, the recursion theorem, the post correspondence problems. All these things are coming under the category of computability theory. In 60s, 70s, the polynomial, non-polynomial, np hard, np complete, then the time complexity, phase complexity. These things are uh, newly coming. These are all mathematical aspects. We design an algorithm. Then the algorithm can be tested by giving some data set, and it is working well, but it may not work well for a different set of data. It may be giving good results with a minimum time, but it may take a larger time by taking a different sets of data. To analyze the performance of algorithm, what is the modality, what is the methodology? We have to depend on mathematics only for that the time complexity is found. The time complexity will be helpful for analyzing the performance of the algorithm. What is the space it requires in the memory? How it is being used, the space complexity. That is also coming out from mathematics. Another important aspect is simulation. We cannot design everything. For example, the person is working with parallel computers. He need not go to the parallel computer at all. He can simulate the parallel computer in the desktop system in their single processor. He can define 256 computers are connected. He can distribute the data to all the 256 computers connected by some network topology. That can be done with the desktop in one machine, in one uh, laptop. That is the help of mathematical simulation. 
by using green theory, invention theory. So everything is uh, possible, the simulated environment. When you want to work with the cloud, when you are uh, developing a new algorithm, you need not go to the actual environment. The actual environment can be simulated. For example, the aircraft is designed. The design of aircraft is tested in the computer itself. The air pressure will be given. The different weathers can be given. Everything in a simulated environment. Even the uh, trainee pilots, they are getting training in the simulated environment. The flights will be uh, in the land only, on the ground. But while they get the training, they feel like flying in the air. That is a simulated environment, mathematical simulation. This software simulation, softwares are available. These softwares are developed by using the simulation concept. These advances in the simulation of the complex scientific and engineering system provide an unparalleled opportunity for solving major problems that face the nation in the 21st century, especially in the defense areas. Another important area is widely used in advertisements, in uh, cinemas, in uh, serials, TV, TV serials, in various aspects, in uh, digital art, this computer graphics is playing a vital role. Design of uh, new pictures, function protein to draw line circle. The two endpoints are required to draw a line. But how do you say that the line is straight? The intermediate points have to be calculated. Again, mathematics is involved. Circle, we need a center point and radius. Then only we can draw a circle. Again, geometric model is used. And we have a lot of uh, uh, softwares are available, a lot of graphics libraries are available. We have pull down menus, 3D coordinate system, etc. OpenGL, DirectX, IGL plot in, graphics kernel system, AutoCAD, various packages, various library functions are available. Now we are using the current trend is uh, implementing OpenGL, DirectX on a specialized chip. Nowadays, we are getting a specialized chip called the graphics processing unit, GPU, on your uh, graphics card. That is uh, another important uh, feature of the newly designed uh, computers. So in this uh, computer graphics, to create an object, these vertices, edges, faces, box, pier, cylinder, torus, these geometric models are being used. Handling of objects, we are using the transformation principles in mathematics is involved. Translation, taking one object, putting it in a different location, that is translation. Same object, the same size, same dimension, everything is same. But taking an object from one place, putting the object on another place. Scaling, enlarging, shrinking. Then rotation, rotating the object, 90 degree. 360 degree, 180 degree, like that, rotating the object. Again, mathematics is involved. Handling of motions, character motion, then animation of all kinds of objects, then handle of rendering, image-based rendering. It is not only with the numerical values, it is based on the images also. Then the essential mathematics for computer graphics or trigonometry. Polar coordinates, 3D coordinate systems, parametric representations, points and vectors, matrices. These are all the essential uh, mathematics for computer graphics. We have the coordinate system, two dimension, three dimension, x axis, y axis, x axis, y axis, and z axis. Rotating the objects, moving the objects, or translating the objects. We have 3D modeling, designing the models and uh, displaying the 3D model on the two-dimensional plane, two-dimensional sheet, two-dimensional screen, then 3D rendering. And here we have uh, the 3D modeling. We have an example 
by using the three dimensional Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system. The equation x square plus y square plus z square equal to r square is a model of a perfect sphere with radius r. So we have the 3D modeling uh, consideration. So we have a, a vessel. This vessel is not a photograph, it is a, uh, it is a drawn. It is a drawn image by using the graphical uh, library routines. It is a, it is a, after uh, giving color everything, it will become real. So we have another uh, new area that is called as virtual reality. Thus we can see the picture. This is not an image. This is not the photograph. So this is a computer generated landscape. You can see it is highly natural. It is computer generated. It is not uh, the photograph. So we have a lot of tools out there. Very minute uh, uh, digital art can be drawn. Modeling complex object. It is very complex. Complex object. Another one you can see. So there is a glass. Water is being poured into the glass. You can see. This is not a photograph. This is not a video. This is not a, a picture drawn. This is a digital art by using the graphic tools. This uh, picture is drawn with a 3D effect. Similarly, we have a campfire, the smoke, fire, this darkness. Everything will be very, very real, very natural, quite natural. Nowadays, we have that uh, uh, the virtual reality. This virtual reality, so when you get into a particular cave, by seeing that uh, the movie, we we'll have the feeling of entering into the cave. Entering into a temple, entering into a place, like that, we have the feeling of getting into the particular place. That is modeling the complex objects by using the graphic designs. Then computer gaming. I need not say anything. So, in everywhere, people are playing with computer games in mobiles and also in. Uh, desktop, laptops. The computer gaming is a simulation of a virtual world. Game designers must have knowledge of the following. To make people, objects, and environments behave realistically in a virtual world. Computer graphics, they should know about artificial intelligence, human-computer interactions and simulation. Software engineering, they should know. Computer security, they should know. And the game designers should know the fundamentals of mathematics. Of course, they should know the law of physics relating to gravity, elasticity, uh, light, and so on. For example, when they design the tennis game, two people are playing tennis in the mobile. They should know the principle of gravity. They should know the principle of elasticity. They should know the principle of sound. When they hit the ball by the racket, they should know what is the sound to be produced. Then when the ball is uh, given from one end to another end, what is the gravity? What is the speed? Everything they should know. Then they should know the boundaries. They should know the fundamental aspects of mathematics, the game designers. Then probability. Needless to say, the central as well as the related objects such as information theory, Photography, artificial intelligence, and game theory. Moreover, the probability is mainly used in the design of operating system itself, in the area of memory management, in networks packet routing, load balancing, branch prediction. And now we have the new area called as data science. The data science is built on the ground of probability, on the foundation of probability. So probability is playing a vital role in computer science. Then finally, we have the search engines. Throughout the globe, now we take the search engine of uh, Google. Throughout the globe, the Google servers are there. Voluminous information are there. 
you just name an information just to give a key just give a word you will get pouring of information lot of information related to that particular word will give it to you that is called as the that is based or that is called as a random walk google search engine used the random walks from various servers they are poured in the information are poured in they are called as random walks random numbers to the graph world wide web links to determine the relative importance of the website the hyperlink structure of the www can be described as a diagram the vertices are the web pages with the directed edge from vertex x vertex y of course we should have a connection between vertex x and vertex y so this is uh, the graph so we have the connectivity most of the uh, nodes are being connected so they can get the information if if any one node requires the information they get the it gets the information from all the nodes so like that the things are being there now with this uh, we can uh, conclude this session of course all the uh, applications all the theorems all the formulas uh, we cannot discuss in uh, this stipulated time so we have just uh, we have taken the overview of uh, some of the applications of mathematics uh, in computer science so it is purely depending on uh, mathematics only i should say computer science is purely depending on mathematics needless to say so mathematics everyone knows mathematics is called as the queen of all sciences queen is powerful we know computer science can be called as the king of all sciences the you mathematics people you may object but i'll give you the convincing reply all the kings are under the control of queens are you happy now so this king computer science is also controlled by the queen mathematics so with this we come to the end of this session thank you for the opportunity thank you for your patient listening if you have any queries you can just ask me now by using the modalities by giving the chat box or some other means i wish you all the best thank you very much